Okay, we have a little unboxing here to do, or unbagging. Let's see what came in here. I know what came in because I just ordered it yesterday, but let's take a look here. Okay, 42 paint pens. Art, artist, artistro, Tistro? Probably Artistro, right? That is the same company that I've ordered um, the paint pens from, the silver and gold. These are the water-based ones, and I've speculated before that they are the same. It's the same uh, manufacturer that makes the Meowzen acrylic painter pens. I could be wrong, but the barrels and the, uh, the caps are all the same, and I just know that, and, you know, those... Uh, Molds are very expensive to make for, you know, like, you know, whatever the uh, molding types of uh, manufacturing needs to take place. Okay, so these are uh, 42 colors. Well, no, they're 42 paint pens. I think there's a couple uh, each of the black. Yeah, there's an extra white and an extra black in here. So what is that? 40 colors total, including the silver and gold. Um, I didn't know about these gigantic multi-packs, but uh, someone tipped me, gave me the, the tip on that yesterday. They said that they had a, I don't know, a 30-some-odd pack, and I don't know, usually at these companies, I, I think that um, if they're successful selling, you know, a given number of uh, multi-packs, then they kind of expand it and they have a bigger pack. That's what's happened on uh, some of my um, gel pen uh, types of... Uh, packs, you know, they, they sell them in smaller packs and suddenly there's, a, you know, more colors added and whatnot. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these. Um, the color range here for me is okay. I mean, paint pens, I, I love these paint pens. I like them even better than the gel pens. If I didn't have the paint pens, though, I would use the gel pens. So I've been using a lot of the Sharpie paint pens. These are the water-based paint pens, okay? And these came in a five pack, all right? And I, I love these, they, these things work great. And uh, I love them in the pastel forms because I, I usually use them as highlights for um, other colors that I've already laid down in dye-based or alcohol inks. And these types of pens really write on top of other things. Like I can, you know, add these types of pen marks, paint pen marks to things like this silver foil card um, over the top of the white pigment ink that's been laid on there. Even though the pigment ink could be wet, the card itself is very slippery, and it just applies on there just fine. Whereas a roller gel pen, might you might add some dots in there, and then that ink or, uh, you know, it, it pigment ink's almost like a paint. It gets rolled up into the ball and they kind of start clogging up and then you have to scribble them and start over again. So the paint pens are a little bit more free flowing than that. So I'm able to add these different types of marks. Okay, so I wanted to do some sort of fall foliage scene, but I didn't have it. So I just turned this scene right here into a pink one. Those little pink highlights in there. I just called it uh, Apple Blossom Bridge, you know, for a name. I don't know, who knows, they could be cherry blossoms. Those trees back there wouldn't be probably apple or cherry, but I don't know. I didn't, I don't know, I just pulled that name off the top of my head. So, that being said, there's a lot of other colors in here. There's not as many fall colors. I wish there were a couple different tones of, like, orange. There's not like a, like a red orange in here, or, um... I don't know, variations of yellow. There's not really an ochre, you know what I mean? I, I'd like to have like a full range going like this, you know? And uh, I don't know, I think it, there's a lot of things like grays in here, you know, different versions of gray, which are great, you know? I do like that, but uh, I don't know. I could use a, with a little bit more of um, a value range, okay? Well, there's tawny orange red and camellia red here, but I don't know. Still, uh, that being said, let's give these a try. Okay, now here, going back to that, what I was talking about with the uh, paint pens. Well, a lot of you guys got the Meowzen paint pens, and I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as the barrels go. Okay, now these ones are different colors. It's easy to uh, put a different mold color into the, uh, you know, those mold injectors. 
But let me show you what this looks like right here, okay? So first of all, see the caps um, are the same, right? There's different colors, but look at that. And then see the makeup of these, that type of pen top tip right there is the same. And then I look at the reverse side of it right here. So either all these companies are just ordering kind of um, whatever colors they want from a certain manufacturer, and I think they're all centralized manufacturing, or it's the same company just releasing a bunch of different pens and configurations under different names to kind of get more of a market share. I don't know. I have no idea. But the bottom line is, if all these pens work as good as the Meowzen uh, pen that I've been using a lot of, then we're in good shape because, I don't know, I've never had one of these things clog up on me, and it flows just fine. You really have to shake it up every time, but that goes, you know, that's, that's the same for all paint pens, you know, that I've ever run across. So anyways, um, I don't know, I think I'm, if these things work out, you know, I suspect they will, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to have a pretty good range of pens to, uh, to use on various color schemes. And, okay, now one of the things that I like a lot, because I'm using these in, for highlighting purposes, is that the, um, kind of the pastel value of any given hue, okay? The hue is the, the color, the value is the relative light or darkness of it. But see, there, you know, there's you know, these types of colors in here. Maybe I don't need them immediately because I have the Sharpie ones, you know, or I could use the Meowsons. They're all, you know, they're all um, uh, water-based, so it's not going to be too different. But, see, I can use all these different types of things as highlighting, okay? There's even this little kind of sea mist blue right here with a little bit of, uh, you know, green in the blue. But let's, okay, so anyways... Every time you use these things, you got to really shake them up. There's that little ball inside, like so. Okay, shake it up both ways, maybe, like this. Do it like this, okay? Really get that mixed up in there. Shake, push, paint, recap, okay? So I shook it. Let's push it, all right? Okay, let's see if we can get a little detail. Let me get some light here, okay? So you just release it like this, okay? If you haven't, you know, so... There's a spring in here, and I'm pressing down at it like that. Okay, if I press too hard, it hurts my thumb, so let me press it on the paper like this. And just hold and wait till you see that paint go down into the tip, okay? A lot of people take this, and they just boing, boing, boing. They're springing it, springing it, springing it, and then they get this big blob of paint that comes out, you know? So you don't want to do that. So anyways, so that was a white tip, and you can see now the paint has been released into the tip from the reservoir back here through the tip, okay? So, that didn't take up too much shaking. That looks pretty opaque to me. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on a darker paper like this, okay? Eh, a little bit translucent, okay? So, I didn't shake that up enough. So, see what it looks like on white paper like that? It looks really good. But let's shake this up even more. I mean, I barely shook it up, so um, let's see what this looks like. It should get much more opaque. Okay, so I've shook it, shaken that up a little bit more. Not a lot. Still a little bit translucent. This is a very um, absorbent paper. Like right here, let's let's take a look. I don't know. In the meantime, let's take a here. I need to shake this one up right here. Let's shake up both of these. The initial shaking, you you know, like I said on the white ones, you really have to shake it up quite a bit. And then if you're using them with semi-regularity, I don't see myself using these with semi-regularity just because there's so many colors, it'll be like kind of more of a specialty thing. But, but the white one I use all the time. Okay, let's see here. There's the white. I don't know, maybe on uh, the uh, absorbent papers, we're not looking at a very opaque... Mark, okay. I've used these on more of a non-porous surface, so... Okay, that'll, that'll be my third one right here. I don't know, I guess that's as much as we're going to get. This is a porous paper, though. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on... Oh, 
kind of more of a, a non-porous surface, okay? Well, this is a porous surface. This is some chrome coat right here. It's uh, dark blue. Okay, that, well, that looks really good to me. I guess it's when it's not really soaking in. Okay, here's my theory. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think the oil-based paint pens are going to give a little bit more of an opaque um, type of mark on this. Now, this could get more opaque. I don't know. If I shook this up more, maybe. Okay. Uh, here, let me just try it on uh, this right here. This one could, could use a little bit of a zip of um, some color. Let's try a couple pinks in here, okay? I only had one value of pink, which was that... Sh no, okay, I used the uh, Sharpie, Lavender, and Pink Rose, okay, when I did this one. Uh, just a side thing. I did this a few days ago, but this is, you know, people have asked about this. This is really dry on here at this point in time, you know. I mean, I wouldn't take my hand and rub on there real hard or something like that, but it's, you know, it's dry enough to the touch. And that's using the Brilliance Ink Pigment Ink, Fast Drying Ink, on, you know, this uh, mirrored surface right here. Okay, let's take a look right here. Let's check this one right here. This one is, I have no idea what color this is. Yeah, I doubt if they have the colors written on here. Yeah. But they do have that little barrel kind of coloring on there. I always thought the uh, the meows and <laughs> you know um, case was kind of cheap. All it is is this little sticker on the side. But this one's actually printed on the uh, the barrel there, Artistro. Okay, so let's take a look here and let's see if um, we get a little bit more of a brighter value. Yeah. We're getting a little bit more of a brighter value. Actually, it's quite <laughs> significant. I'll hold this up right here. So see what this does? I mean, uh, this is kind of giving this um, scene a little bit more kind of impact. You see that? those, those little brighter ones right in there? Here's ones that without. I mean, you can't really see it, but this one's really standing out against this really nicely. Can you see it in there? And then there's, there's a bunch of white pink in there, believe it or not. It just doesn't look so much, you know, when I put this much brighter one next to it. And I don't know, from my experience, I, I think it's kind of, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, in terms of the colors, let's get this other one moving here. Uh, oh. I wonder if this is the Sakura pink. Sakura is a cherry blossom in Japanese. Let's see. I don't know if they... I don't know. Yeah, it's a little... This pink right here is more of a... Oh, it's kind of a... It looks like it has a little bit of a warmer tinge to it. It's not so kind of a... Um, I don't know, almost like a fluorescent pink. Okay, let's see. It's a, this one's a little bit more mellow. I don't know if this is the Sakura pink. I, I'm just trying to look at it from these little things right there. Oh, one of these is called Purple Stars. That's fun. Okay. So, that is that. I don't know if you can see that one. That one's kind of mellow. Well, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's kind of... It's a, this isn't salmon pink or anything like that, but it's got a little bit more of that in there. So you see what that, I think that kind of creates this, you know, uh, a little bit more of a shimmer and not so monotone. I did use lavender and pink from the other ones, but I, mean, I don't know, just the more kind of even subtle variations that you add to a given area adds to the visual richness, even if the... Uh, the range of values and um, kind of temperatures within a given hue is, you know, relatively, you know, short, you know what I mean? But it's better than having like this, you know, even if you kind of expand the range like this, and let's say the full range is like this, but if you're only going from this to this, you know what I mean? That's like doubling the range of, uh, 
value, temperature, hue, whatever, you know. And all of that kind of adds up, you know, to a nicer, you know, potential end result. Now, if I don't have these pens, I'm not missing it, you know what I mean? But if I have them, I use them. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the bottom line is that I say, I say you make do, um, or I do, and then, like with something like this, there, I don't know, there was 42 colors, and this cost me about $40 or something like that. So for me, I'm using these quite often, and I, there's some colors that I may never use, but um, I don't know, for me it's, it's pretty well worth it, especially when I'm used to paying in the old days, you know, maybe $3, 250 I don't know. Uh, for some of those gel pens way back when. And even even some of the paint pens of old, um, you know, going back, I don't know, 20, 25 years, there might have been like a $4. I think it was an oil-based paint pen, but the Sakura uh, Pen Touch was also, you know, 2 or $3 each. So these ones are, you know, less than a dollar each, you know, 90, you know, close to a dollar each or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I, I think it's nice kind of having the... Uh, range here by which to choose. I'm gonna have to shake all these things up and get them ready, but you know, having a nice range of, see, when I'm doing something like grass, if I'm doing them in dye-based inks, it'll be nice to have, you know, a selection of, you know, it's almost too much here, but having a selection of both value and temperature of that given hue. Look at this one, it looks like blue. And it's almost going into that blue color, you know, spectrum. So what it would look like in terms of a spectrum, as you go from one hue to the next on like a color wheel, this is what I used to do all the time. I'd just lay them out like so. So here we're going from kind of like a yellow here. Let's say it goes from like something like this. Okay, you see how this is going? Yellow and yellow green. You know blue or yeah, blue green blue lighter blue and these two these two look exactly the same to me one's brilliant blue one's sapphire okay one slightly lighter so we'll go like that but anyways you know it's nice to have this type of spectrum from which to choose because if you're doing something like highlighting i always kind of go kind of one step lighter or several steps lighter to to um to highlight something and sometimes let's say if i have some kind of blue object in the background let's say it's a winter scene or something like that sometimes it's nicer to highlight with kind of a uh, a lighter blue than it is to jump all the way to white which i have done all the time but see something like this the highlight for that blue right there that darkest one might not be this bright sometimes, you know, having something like that sparkle off it, but something that's nice to have it kind of illuminated kind of slightly with something like this, which would show up on that. If this is the color of the object, then we can highlight with this. But maybe, like, I wouldn't use this as my highlight for that because they're just too close in value. So, you know, you can go and kind of go up the, uh, the color, uh, the value um, spectrum or whatnot. Okay, so anyways, I mean, the, you know, you don't have to, you know, paint pens aren't just for highlighting either. You know, you can use them for all kinds of different things. You can color something completely if you want to. But that's that's my usage, so. So I can't wait to give these a try, especially on something like, I, I really like doing uh, things like uh, photo paper with alcohol inks and doing these little, you know, kind of highlighting, coloring dots with the things like this, and uh, I don't know. I would say I'm pretty well set for now. By the way, these things do draw on different things. I've tried it with the, the, the white one before, but it does draw on things like glass, ceramic, porcelain, whatever, you know. So talk about some of the most non-porous surfaces ever. And it's pretty opaque on them. This, well, you know, a really a super absorbent paper. This isn't the Brilliance one, by the way. The Star Dream. Uh, Star Dream papers, not brilliance. Uh, so it draws on all kinds of different things. They, most of the examples that I saw in the uh, the, the photos were people um, 
writing on, doing stone stone painting or whatever they call it, I guess, with pens. Maybe the not the seven millimeter ones, but the, the thicker ones. But I don't know. They're fantastic that way. Water-based, multi-service, and quick drying, and I can vouch for that in terms of, uh, you know, everything that I've found from it. So, fun stuff. Can't wait to try it. We'll give it a test, and if you like what you see, maybe you can, you know, think about uh, picking up a set of these yourself at some point down the line. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, by the way. I just like what I like, and uh, I don't know. A lot of people ask me about these things anyways, so... Three different sets here, and I think I'm ready to go. All right, thanks for watching.